Welcome to another RMS support tutorial video. Our topic, updated transmittal process, government mode. Topics for this video are going to explain the new process of how to complete a transmittal sent to the government by the contractor. Now let's get started. Here we have already logged into the contract and are ready to start our submittals by clicking on the submittal tab. In order for a contractor to send you a transmittal, the first things that must be done is the specification section must be filled out and the submittal register must be filled out. For a detailed description of how to set those up, please see the link in the description box below. Going into the submittal register, this is where you will see the status of all the submittals in the status column on the right and a history of each item by clicking on the item and looking at the history section at the bottom of the screen. It shows when the item was submitted, how many times it was submitted, and other pertinent information. Now, hit the back button and go into the transmittal log. The first screen you will see is the transmittals in review. However, if the contractor has just sent you the transmittal, you must first go to pending government receipt section to enter the date in which you received the transmittal before you can review it. To do this, double click on the date box for the transmittal to bring up the date picker for the date and choose the correct date. Then click anywhere else in the screen to move it from this section into the transmittals in review section. Now click on the transmittal in review tile at the top, find the transmittal to review and double click on it to open it. From here, you'll need to make sure that what the contractor sent you is what you were expecting. For example, Ensure that the classification and the review due dates are correct. Please refer to your district's policy for how to determine what those should be. The next thing to look at are the remarks section. Any remarks that you wish to send to the contractor, you can put in here, and any remarks from the contractor will show up in here. Click on the Secondary Reviewer Remarks tab to view or add any required secondary reviewer remarks. To add a secondary reviewer, Click on the Add button to bring up a staff lookup view. We recommend that you search for the person's name in this search box that is up here to make it easier for you to find the secondary reviewer. Once selected, click OK. Now the secondary reviewer can come in, write their remarks, and enter their dates. The review date can be entered by another person. To enter the review date, click on the date icon to choose the correct due date. Then, the secondary reviewer can enter their remarks, and once finished, click on the date icon for the review completed date to select the date completed. Next, you will need to look at any attachments the contractor has sent in the transmittal. There are two places in which the contractor can attach the attachments. One is up here with each submittal item, and the other place is to go into the document package down here. If you're going into the document package, once you open it up, you will see the 4025 the contractor sent, plus any other files they attached here. You can also see how many files are attached and what types of files they are by looking at these little sort tiles up at the top. Click on the back button to return to the main transmittal screen, and then click on the attachments to view any files added there. Go to the contractor document package at the top and double click on the document package to open it. Here you will see a list of all of the files that is in this document package, and you can open them by either double clicking on them or single clicking on them and then choosing the edit button. You can choose to save the files by single clicking on them and then clicking on the save document to file button. You can also see if the documents have been signed or not by looking at the signature status column. If you need to manually sign as either the contractor or the government, you can click the checkboxes down below respectively. If you do, the signature status will change to a tested signature. Any notes you need to send to the contractor can be entered in the Government Review Notes text box, and any comments from the contractor will show in the Contractor Notes to the Government box. After you have finished reviewing all of the information in the document package, if you need the contractor to make changes, you will need to click on the Return for Corrections button. Otherwise, if you are ready for the documents to go to PCF, click on the Accept Package button, and then click Yes to accept it. After the document package has been accepted, click the back button two times to return to the main transmittal screen. Then repeat the process for any other submittal items in the transmittal. Once done with all attachment reviews, if the contractor needs to make changes to the transmittal, click on the Return for Corrections button. Otherwise, choose the appropriate QA code. 
You can do that by double-clicking here in the QA code box to bring the drop-down for all the QA codes that are available. You will notice that some will end with the word completed and others with resubmit. A QA code ending in completed means the contractor cannot resubmit this particular submittal item again. And ones that end in resubmit means that the contractor will be able to resubmit this item again at a later date. Refer to your district's policy for which QA code to use with each submittal item. Once you have chosen the appropriate QA code for all submittal items, you can then proceed to sign the 4025. Prior to signing the 4025, you must first determine how the contractor sent the transmittal to you, as there are two ways in which the contractor can send the 4025 to the government. The first way is when the contractor electronically signs the 4025, identifiable because the Apply QA Codes and Sign 4025 button is an option. Click on the Apply QA Codes and Sign 4025 button to complete this transmittal. When asked, enter your PIN to verify who is signing the 4025, and then click OK. The second option for a contractor to send the 4025 to the government is by manually signing the 4025. If the contractor manually signs the 4025, what you will see is that the Apply QA Codes and Sign 4025 button is not an option. This means the government will have to manually sign the 4025 as well, and that the 4025 will not have the QA codes applied inside RMS. If you want the QA codes to be on the 4025, you must export the contractor's 4025 to manually input the QA codes. Do this by going into the document package and saving your 4025 to your computer by clicking on the Save Document to File button. You will also need to do this if you are going to manually sign this document. After you have named the file, click the Save button to finish saving the file. You will then need to either print and handwrite the QA codes and add your signatures to the document, or use an external software to apply the QA codes and add your signature that way. After you have entered your information in the 4025 and saved it to your computer, you will need to go back into RMS and click the Back button to go back to the main transmittal screen. Next, you will need to click on Manually Attach Sign 4025 button and navigate to and select the previously saved 4025. Then choose Open. After that, it's going to go through the process of uploading the signed 4025 and completing the transmittal. But you're not done yet. You will notice that it adds another transmittal package in the bottom. Open that document package and complete it by clicking on the Submit for Review button and click Yes to complete the submission. Now, select the 4025 and then check the Manually Signed by Government checkbox to change the signature status to a tested signature. Then click on the Accept Package button and Yes to complete this document package. Once it's completed, then you're going to click the Back button two times to fully complete this transmittal. Once complete, the transmittal moves from In Review to Pending Contractor Acknowledgement. And this concludes the requirements for the government to complete a transmittal. In summary, we've discussed how to complete a transmittal on the government side. We hope you found this video informative and thank you for watching.